Hello my friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. How are you guys doing today? We are starting in Japan where we have a 5.9 earthquake that hit. It's a shallow earthquake. It did kill at least three people and injured more than 350. And here we can see uh, the disruption that you can see on the surface there. And you gotta wonder, you know, they, there haven't been any larger earthquakes at all. And was it really a 5.9 or again, are they just trying to downgrade them over at the USGS? And so the epicenter was located 1.9 kilometers south-southwest of Taksuki, and the population there is 354,000. And a good-sized earthquake, it hit during the morning rush hour and definitely killed at least three people, injured more than 350. A nine-year-old girl was curled, uh, killed after damage from a wall, trapped her into a swimming pool facility. And an 85-year-old man died with a damaged block wall trapped him inside. And then a third victim was an 80-year-old man that was crushed by a falling bookshelf at his home. Authorities say 700 people have fled to evacuation centers. And of course, Japan, you know, Ring of Fire, that is one of the most earthquake-prone zones in the, in the world over there. And we have a bright fireball streaking across the sky in Belgium. Oh, nearly 170 people called in reports on receiving it and seeing it. And so we've had a lot of things coming through uh, as far as you know, close call asteroids, lots of fireballs. And this is yet another one. You can see all the sightings over in Belgium. And the fire fireball went northeast with a 40 degree inclination with the hor horizontal on a 46 mile long path and then it disappeared after fragmenting at an altitude of about 30 kilometers. And there you can see a streak as it went on by. And they could be spectacular to witness in person for sure. So positive polarity CHHSS sparks G1, a minor magnetic storm. And this is uh, a positive polarity coronal hole high-speed stream. And it's been affecting our planet since uh, June 17th and sparked a minor geomagnetic storm. And uh, everything is really pretty quiet out there overall. And, you know, the sun been pretty quiet as well. As to be expected as we go deeper and deeper into this grand solar minimum. Guatemala volcano search is now called off, so they have still 200 people unaccounted for, and they've given up trying to, to find them. And um, they have confirmed the deaths of over 110 people as a result of that uh, just surprisingly strong eruption that so many people were just standing around and just filming, thinking it was going to be typical, but then they couldn't get out of the way quick enough. And uh, this, this volcano, Fuego, is located 35 kilometers southwest of the capital, and it's still generating four or five weak explosions an hour, sending a column of gray ash more than a thousand meters into the sky still. Additionally, rains are forecast for Sunday, posing danger of volcanic mud flows. More than 3,600 villagers have been forced to take temporary refuge in schools and community halls. So, you know, that was a, a very, very bad eruption. And it just goes to show how you just can't take it for granted that things are going to stay the same and be typical. And whether it's the flooding, like the incredible flooding here that we're seeing pictures from that hit Michigan, Wisconsin, and Minnesota, you can see it. It's, it's just totally destroyed highways and roads, just destroyed as if you had an earthquake go through there. And this is the upper Midwest, a record-breaking rain on, on, on this whole area and very destructive flash flooding. And so the worst affected areas include the towns of Houghton, Lake Linden, Dodgeville, and Hancock, with over 60 sinkholes and washouts reported. You know, just whole streets devastated. Look at, look at that road. Just, it's totally impassable, as is that one. Very, very, very destructive, powerful force. And now we have scorching heat set to hit the East Coast. 
Schools are closed and people are warned to stay indoors as record-breaking temps are going to sweep the region with New York getting its hottest day since 1929. And so we're at June 18th. We'll be uh, heading into summer pretty soon. And I guarantee you we're going to be talking about record-breaking cold, cold temperatures probably in September. And uh, we'll see a very, very early snow this year as well, I would expect. But part of this whole thing is these wild temperature swings. So a heat advisory in effect for New York from 11 a.m. to 8 p.m. on Monday. And the city hasn't been this hot since 1929. So New Yorkers will be heading to the beach, which is a good idea. And so seven days, seven days, seven 5.3 volcanic eruptions. Uh, I mean, how likely do you guys really think this is? Look at this, 617, 616, 615, 614, 613, 612, 611. All 5.3s. Have they just given up and they just want to slap a number on it? Are they trying to give us a signal? Because there's just no way that they're going to be the exact same. It, it's just so highly unlikely. And so when we look at how things are going right now, on Hawaii. We have 539 earthquakes. So we had an eruption yesterday. More than likely we'll get another one today. Uh, right now 539 earthquakes which is pretty high uh, especially since the eruption yesterday. So the number of earthquakes is at a much higher place than it was before. Because we actually if you go back about two weeks ago we had a couple of days where they dropped all the way down into just two digits, like 69 for a 24 hour period, 70 something. Uh, and now it's not dropping down that much after having an eruption. So it's, it's a very interesting thing and, and it appears to be, you know, still building. The lava flow has definitely increased the, uh, the destructive forces have increased so it's nowhere near done and uh, you know we shall see what happens with that again and it looks like two of them just dropped off that were very very deep over in uh, Fiji but otherwise another relatively busy day with nothing too huge everything in the fives and fours as far as the bigger ones going and and we're just seeing consistent activity in the new madrid too nothing major but consistent which is interesting so remnants of hurricane helped crews slow the fort 16 fire in colorado so now they're up to 30 percent containment so that's good thing and they definitely need the rains through that area that that area has been so uh, stricken by drought so good thing that the remnants of Hurricane Bud went through there and did slow the growth of the 416 fire north of Durango. And uh, it did not grow overnight, which is a, a really good thing. And uh, we'll see if this is going to be a recurring pattern. I would, I would suspect that we'll see this uh, happen often now as far as the, the new weather pattern with the tropical storms developing in that area and then heading up that way. Now, some of you guys have talked about these things uh, before, about the whole, and I don't want to get too much into this, Walmart thing. Uh, but this is just an article, and this is in the Star-Telegram, saying, Inside a former, former Walmart on the Texas-Mexico border that houses nearly 1,500 immigrant boys. So for more than a year, an old Walmart along the Mexican border has been a mystery to those driving by on the highway. In place of the Supercenter's trademark logo hangs a curious sign, Casa Padre. But behind the sliding doors is a bustling city into it, unto itself equipped with classrooms, recreational centers, and medical examination rooms. And it now houses more than 1,400 immigrant boys, dozens of them forcibly separated from their parents at the border by a new Trump administration zero tolerance policy. 
On Wednesday, for the first time since the policy was announced amid intense national interest after a U.S. Senator was turned away, federal authorities allowed a small group of reporters to tour the secretive shelter, the largest of its kind in the nation. Inside, in what used to be a McDonald's, sheltered employ shelter employees served scores of mostly teenage boys chicken, veggies, and plastic fruit cups. In the former loading docks, children watched animated movie Moana, dubbed in Spanish, where there was once a garage, six young people played basketball. They used to do oil changes in there. So, two Texas-based Southwest Key has... Yeah, I'm sorry about that. Texas-based Southwest Key, Southwest Key has grown quickly in recent years, fueled by surges of young Central Americans seeking refuge in the North, and the organization now houses 5,129 immigrant boys in three states, approaching half the approximate 11,200 currently in federal custody in facilities that are being strained to the capacity, according to Juan Sanchez, the founder and chief executive. The policy of criminally prosecuting all those who cross the border illegally is creating a new category of residents inside these holding centers, young boys and girls who are grappling with the trauma of being unexpectedly separated from their mothers and fathers. To accommodate them, Sanchez says, Southwest Key is retrofitting some facilities with smaller bathrooms, smaller sinks, smaller everything. So I don't know, what do you guys feel about this? This feels kind of icky to me. It, it doesn't feel good at all and uh, you know there's been many many quote unquote crazy internet rumors concerning Walmart and all sorts of camps and uh, this does make you wonder so I'll just leave it at that and you guys you know share what you guys think about that and maybe this is more ominous than most people would think. R Russia holds less U.S. debt than Bermuda after dumping half its holdings. And so Moscow is going to keep dumping U.S. debt, according to an analyst who spoke to Russia today. Latest U.S. Treasury Department data shows Russia cut its holdings by half in April. And so you have Russia doing that at China. So there's a big, big covert war going on and you know some will believe that everything is an illusion you know created by the Illuminati cabal and that really you know there's nothing that goes on truly between the countries it's all just a show and others believe you know that everything that goes on with the countries is the real deal and, and don't believe in the Illuminati cabal or the shadow government um, but either way one of the things that's been said forever is there'll, there'll never be a major war like a World War III as long as you have Russia and China uh, basically trading in petrodollars and, and having you know so much invested in the U.S. and holding U.S. debt and that if they switched to not using the petrodollar, you know, went to a different system, if they started dumping debt then we have to be concerned because then they wouldn't be so tied into the U.S. And we're seeing that and we're seeing more than that now. You know, we've seen the BRICS countries come up with their own petro yuan and, and we're seeing all these sanctions and tariffs which are very ominous in a lot of ways. If you go back and look through history and, uh, you know, look at the things that happened prior to World War One, prior to World War Two. India attacks 30 American products in equivalent retaliation for U.S. Tariff, tariff hike. And so, you know, China doing it, India doing it. I mean, well, love them or hate them, you know, President Trump has definitely have, has a different style than most. And so, you know, whether you believe in the policies or not, what it's doing is it's making it much easier for a lot of nations to separate themselves from the U.S. And so it's going to lead to uh, a totally different climate out there. And, you know, are we heading into a period of withdrawal from global society? It, it does kind of feel like that in so many ways, and many people will think that's wonderful. Uh, the, the downside is 
you know, a global society is really what we need. Of course, not ran by the people that have been running it. And um, the ones that, you know, want to, you know, where there's so much fear about the new world order, which has been here the whole time. It's, it's always been here. They've always been running the show. So that's part of the thing that always makes me almost giggle when I hear a new world order. It's like it's, it's been here the whole time. You know, if you look close enough, you see the new world order has existed for millennia. And so it's, it's almost like they're, we've talked about this before too. They always have to kind of tell you what they're doing ahead of time, whether it's in the movies, whether it's in the news, whether it's, it's through whatever type of medium, it's always has to, has to be out there ahead of time. And, uh, it's very, very interesting when we start looking at things, it sure does feel like we're living in some sort of crazy matrix. You know, it's, it's just so surreal the way things really, really work. It almost feels like we're in this big virtual reality game or we're, we're living in one of these movies ourselves. So these are all really ominous things. Um, in some ways, you, it's so easy to see how people could say, well, this, this should happen. Uh, this has to happen because the U.S. has such a uh, deficit, which is, is true. You know, the deficit has been a huge issue uh, that's been run up. And uh, we've been ha we have this innate fear of a one world government when that's really what we have. We have it right now. It's, it's really here. And it's been here. And, and so, you know, we're looking at things thinking it's something that they're trying to accomplish. They've accomplished it a long time ago. And it's manifested itself in many ways, you know, as the Roman Empire, as the British Empire, now as the U.S. Empire, and uh, working through things like the Catholic Church, uh, and working through other bodies, too. I mean, obviously, the, the WTO, uh, the UN, you know, and... It's, it's interesting because, you know, the people in the know fear the things that really are exactly what we need, but the fact is we have bad versions of them. So we do need to become unified, and we do need to become a more integrated society. It doesn't mean we have to give up our traditions, our ways, our beliefs, but yet we're taught to fear those things because they're giving us this version of their integrated society in which they keep us all in duality, fearful of each other, fearful of the future, and uh, giving us this big brother system that we see all around us. So this type of thing going on, you know, it leads to isolationism in a way. It could also lead to definite wars down the line as well. And we're, we're definitely seeing a changing of, of the guard in many ways, but still, it's, it's all under control of the handlers. So as you guys probably just saw, now this is Mimic, and um, this was sent in by a viewer that was saying, look at where the Galapagos Islands are. And I've seen this before, and I've seen some people say, uh, it's just a glitch. You can see these beams of energy coming out, one in the South Atlantic Anomaly area, right there, and then over here. They always seem to emanate from Antarctica, which, you know, obviously we know there's bases down there. And uh, so, anyway, the, the subscriber was saying perhaps this was why the Galapagos volcano went off. And we don't know what type of tech they have down there. They, they probably have very, very high tech, and perhaps, perhaps they are manipulating a lot of things from down there. So we know about CERN, we know about HARP, and we obviously know about all the chemtrails. But yeah, there definitely can be other high tech things that they're using down there to manipulate the weather, to give us earth changes, uh, to amplify hurricanes or create hurricanes. Same thing with triggering volcanoes. 
we saw a lot of this going on. Again, Mr. MBB did a good job showing the correlations uh, with these type of energetic outbursts and those strange anomalous areas where all of a sudden water would just disappear from a beach. And uh, that has been noted a lot. That was noted a lot last summer. I think it was mostly last summer and going into the fall we were seeing that often. So perhaps they're back at it again. And uh, some, some think that all this is truly manufactured. This whole notion of, um, you know, maybe they're triggering the grand solar minimum. Maybe they're triggering the pole shift. And truly, if they had, you know, if we're talking about extraterrestrials or interdimensionals that are, you know, thousands of years ahead of us or maybe millions of years ahead of us, they could probably do anything that <laughs> they would uh, want to as far as manipulating our reality. When you think about the technology that they must have available to them, if they're really what's at the top of the food chain. So just other interesting thoughts. And so this is a rainforest in Mozambique that has a wealth of new species. And so even though we have all these die-offs, there's still so many new species being found. And so it's not like the entire planet is definitely, you know, going to die off, go away. We're still finding new species all the time. And as we we're talking about, things are changing, but things are mutating, you know, from the energy coming in as well. And so, you know, it's, it's not all doom and gloom. You know, there's still uh, amazing discoveries being made and amazing technological advances as well. And we're waking up to so much. We really are waking up to so many things. And uh, that is definitely a very cute little frog there very interesting looking uh, but rainforests they have like 50% of the diversity on the whole planet and if you haven't been to one you should really go explore one at some time it's just amazing an amazing thing to to visit so Mexico the fans there in Mexico at a soccer game or football as they call it down there they actually caused a measurable earthquake when the game-winning goal against Germany happened. It was measurable. They were so excited. Pretty impressive. We, we know how wound up they get about their football down there. And then this is another one that was sent in by a um, subscriber. And what do you guys see out of this? This is a, a crop circle that appeared. And this one is in France, I believe, yes. And it appeared on the 11th of June. And so the subscriber that sent it in takes it as being a pole shift by the dynamics here, almost like a yin and yang type of sign. Um, but they interpreted it as being possibly a pole shift. There's seven major circles in that, which could correspond to the seven chakras as well. Um, so it's, it's all interesting. And, you know, is it man-made? Is it a hoax? Or is it something that's a message given to us from higher dimensionals, higher beings, technologically. It's, it's all very interesting and hard to say. But let me know what you guys think about this and what you see in this. And then we have a lot of weird anomalous things. So this is also sent in by a subscriber. And here they see um, basically kind of like an alien head in here. So see if you guys could see that as well. There's so many strange cloud formations going on right now. I mean, just incredibly crazy cloud formations that you can see multiple things in if you just sort of relax your vision. And they just seem so odd. Um, I'm sure a lot of them are man-made because I see a lot of chemtrails mixed in as well. And, you know, you can see kind of like an eye right in there as well. And when you, when you look into things, perhaps some of it's our imagination. Perhaps some of it's just basically our opening up to other possibilities. And perhaps some of it's higher beings giving us messages and just kind of playing with us sometimes. 
So this was also sent in by a subscriber and this is an interesting sky anomaly as well. And we see another photo of it. Very, very cool. And this was sent in by Trevor, which was a nice little sign showing much love and appreciation for the Evolutionary Energy Arts family. So I thought that was really nice. And thank you, Trevor. So as always, my friends, please do thumbs up to uh, support the channel and subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. Click the bell to make sure you get all the new videos coming out, all the notifications. Double check your subscription too, because many people have found that they've been up unsubscribed, not just from my channel, but a lot of the other channels that are covering the same sort of topics. So definitely check that out, because that seems to be a common thing going on. And uh, share, share, share as much as possible. Share with as many people as you can. We need to wake up everybody as much as possible. As, as more people come online, we'll have less panicking later on, which is always a good thing. So get, may you guys be blessed with abundant love, peace, happiness, well-being. May you always be guided in all ways. Namaste, my friends, and God bless.